Hey guys, in this video we're going to check out the Checkmade Mauser 9822, uh, the long boy made by the uh, Brno factory in Czechoslovakia, and the first Mauser adopted by the new nation of Turkey. Now before we get into the specifics of this 9822, we need to talk a little bit about the history behind it. So there's kind of three main events that sort of lead into the development of this gun. So you have um, the end of World War I happening, and you have Germany being forced to pay like massive amounts of reparations. You know, uh, not just in cash, a lot of people, you know, think of the hyperinflation and all that, you know, that, that happened as a result of that. But also Germany had to give over hundreds of thousands of, of weapons to, to, you know, pretty much everybody you could think of. Uh, and they also gave a lot of the machine tooling to make weapons away. Specifically, they had to give away a lot of the Mauser making machinery that was at the DWN factory away to the new nation of Czechoslovakia. So with the Austro-Hungarian Empire splitting up, we have the formation of this new country of Czechoslovakia, and they were trying to set up their own arms production at Brno, where the sort of existing factories already were. And now they got these, you know, they got the new, these new machines from DWM, and they got tens of thousands of Mausers as well from the Germans. So pretty much the Czechs kind of look around at, you know, what, what guns are available, what they can make, and they decide on the Mauser. Now, according to Robert Ball, the Czechs actually, when they looked at all the guns that they wanted to base their new rifle on, they picked the Mexican model of 1912, which just sounds really random, like that that specific Mexican Mauser is the Mauser they wanted to base their gun on, not any other European design or whatever. And that's what they got when they got this 1898. So obviously, um, 1898 for, for Mauser 98 and 22 for the year of adoption, uh, of 1922 is when they decided that this is going to be the gun that they go to. And the 1922 was a rather short-lived rifle in Czech military service. You know, not too long after, you know, the adoption and, and issuance of the, the 9822s, the Czechs end up adopting and going with the VZ-24, uh, which is this guy here. This is an export model, so just imagine this with a straight bolt handle. They end up going with this, um, which is pretty much the same exact rifle as the 9822, just, you know, shortened to that kind of sweet spot. Um, you can see a lot of countries will kind of go into this, you know, 600 millimeter barrel length kind of around the time period. And, and that's what they did, obviously, with this gun. Now, even though the 9822 had fallen out of favor with the Czechs for a new shorter rifle, um, a lot of countries still didn't mind having and actually wanted a long rifle. So the, the Czechs ended up making and exporting quite a number of these 9822s. Now, the third piece of this puzzle is the Turkish War of Independence. So with the Ottoman Empire, you know, losing World War I and kind of getting split up by the Allies, there's this movement that rises up in Turkey that pretty much didn't want to go along with this. They didn't want to go along with, you know, giving up most of their land and national identity to, to these foreign powers. So they rose up and decided to fight against these, you know, a lot of these European nations. They founded the new nation of Turkey in 1922. And, you know, in the mid-20s, the Turks are really looking at getting some new guns. Now, the Turks had a whole bunch of these Ottoman Mausers left over, like this Ottoman 1893 and 765. But at the end of this Turkish War of Independence, this is already after World War I, you have some rifles that have between, you know, 10 and 30 years of usage on them and been through years and years and years of harsh fighting. Um, the Turks really need some new guns, and for whatever reason, they decide to get out of 765, and they get into 8mm Mauser, and they go with the 9822. This ends up being one of the first rifles really bought by this new nation of Turkey to be issued to their troops. Um, they switch from uh, 765 to this um, 8mm Mauser for whatever reason, um, and they this is this is the pattern that they really liked, and this is. Pretty much this exact pattern is what they brought a lot of their older rifles up to. So they would take a lot of their older guns like the 1893s and they would kind of, uh, you know, rebarrel them to 8mm Mauser, you know, put new stocks on them and everything. And, uh, and that's what we kind of know now as the, you know, ubiquitous Turkish Mauser that we see. Now this is one of those weird things with the U.S. collector market where you can have a gun like this that it's, it's a high quality gun, it's a nice Mauser, it's in a common cartridge, and for and be pretty it's pretty uncommon it's not like these are super common to see out there and for whatever reason these are just really cheap like this is like one of the most affordable like mausers to get into um probably has a lot to do with the the long rifle um a lot of the short rifles tend to kind of 
get a premium price over these long rifles and, and some guns, kind of like these. Let's do some close-ups of this rifle and I'll show you kind of a few interesting markings on this gun. You can see this nice uh, bluing that the checks put on the receivers uh, and that the bolt is left in the white, kind of following this you know, older sort of uh, tradition with Mausers. And here we can see the, uh, the markings, the, uh, the Arabic numerals that are on this rear sight here. Um, this is different than the Persians. It looks, it looks kind of similar. It's based on the same system, um, but this is l different than the ones that's on the Persian contract. So the Persian contract or Iranian contract, uh, 9822s will have uh, slightly different numberings on their rear sight than this one. Um, but this is the dead giveaway that this rifle is part of that Turkish contract. All over the gun, you'll find these little uh, circle Z markings. This is just the marking for the, uh, the check factory at Brno. Uh, interestingly, this has a really nice um, star cartouche stamped uh, right into the wrist there. The rear sling swivel here, as well as the trigger guard, um, this is meant to be used with the, uh, the German style of uh, sling here. It's got this pretty nifty kind of uh, quick detach mechanism to it. Um, but if you just imagine a leather sling kind of coming off the bottom of this and uh, this piece just kind of goes in the hole and then it can be um, attached. Um, this can also go in the trigger guard for the parade style. So that sort of just carries over from the, uh, the German Gewehr 98. So we have the 9822 on the bottom and a Gewehr 98 on top. And you can see that these guns are pretty much identical. Um, very similar uh, sling setups, the, uh, the barrel bands, the band springs are very similar. Um, finish is uh, kind of interesting on, on this piece right here. Uh, I don't know why the front band does not have the parade hook. If it has a parade sling attachment in there, it's possible that the, uh, the, this front band got swapped with another one somewhere in its life. Um, the, uh, the cleaning rods are pretty much exactly the same, front sights, caliber. Um, I mean, just looking at the front parts of the gun here, these are pretty much identical with the Gewehr 98. So 9822s are definitely one of those guns that's underappreciated on the U.S. marketplace today for, for whatever reason. The guns are, you know, high quality made. It's in a good, it's in a good caliber. Um, it's just a good overall gun and the, the price doesn't really fully reflect that. So I think if you're looking to kind of get into a Mauser for pretty cheap and if you don't mind, you know, a long rifle like this and check out the 9822s. Um, if you don't want a long rifle, but you, you know, still want something that's high quality or whatever, you could check out the VZ 24s. Um, those are good quality guns and very underpriced as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. I really appreciate your viewership and I'll see you next time.